Hello, and welcome to The Real Hernando, a podcast created to highlight our amazing local community and small businesses here in Hernando, Mississippi. I'm your host, Derek, and this episode is produced by Shelby Road Productions. Today, I'm talking with Dr. Vivian Lowe, uh, and she's the owner of Afterglow Beauty and Wellness. So let's talk about the business here real quick. So After, Afterglow Beauty and Wellness is an aesthetics and wellness center right here in Hernando, Mississippi that pri- prioritizes natural beauty and the outstanding results that complement it. Dr. Vivian Lowe is the owner and sole injector at Afterglow Beauty and Wellness in Hernando as a board certified physician and specialist in aesthetic medicine, Dr. Lowe understands facial anatomy and carries and carries out treatments with extreme attention to detail. Afterglow Beauty and Wellness welcomes patients in their first time or return visits. To book an appointment, call the office or schedule online. I'm going to spell the website out. Okay. Okay. This one a little tricky. It's A F T R G L O M E D. ISPA.com, AfterglowMediSpa.com. Dr. Lowe, thanks for being with me today. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. So uh, I can thank your assistant. No one can see her. She's off camera. Melinda (laughs) is the one that reached out to me, and I'm grateful for that. I'm glad to be here uh, and get your story for this podcast. Uh, And I, as I briefly mentioned in this little pre-interview we did, I try to do like a three-part arc. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, we want to get to know the person, sure. the bridge to business owner, and then the business. Okay. Well, the first third of this for you mm-hmm. could probably take an hour because of <laughs> uh, because of all the schooling and the history and everything. So uh, we'll, I'll narrow we'll, it down. Yeah, we'll try to. Yeah. <laughs> so you've done a lot. Uh, is, I've, I've done sure, a lot for sure. For yes. sure. But uh, so we definitely want to learn more about you and your family and and your okay. your upbringing, but also the journey that eventually sure. brought you to this business and then we'll talk about the business. So sure. uh, are you originally from Hernando? I am not. I'm actually <clears throat> originally from West Memphis, Arkansas. So not far from here. Okay. Just across the bridge. Yep. Okay. And so went to high school there, graduated from there, went to undergrad at Vandy. Um, did not want to go to medical school, even though I wanted to be my do- a doctor my whole life. But when the time came, I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to do medicine. What did you want to do? Um, I had no idea. Like I, I, I majored in chemistry and math, so I thought I was just going to be a, I was going to be a lab rat and go do get a PhD in chemistry and maybe find some, I don't know, new drugs or something to help more people. But being a physician was like, was in the back of my mind. I just keep kind of pushing it out of my mind. Um, but you know, I think with passion and things that God has intended for me, it He always kind of brings His way back. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember I was on. Um, I forgot what I was doing, but I was somewhere and my dad was like, you know, you really can't help anyone with just your bare hands. Like you have to have some sort of knowledge or something that you can apply so you can help more people. The more you learn, the more you can help. Hmm. And so after that, I was like, okay, fine. Maybe I should go to medical school. You know, at this point I was in. Okay, dad. I was in, yes. My dad knows best. And so I was like, at this point I'm already in, you know, I should just go, Mm -hmm. you know? So, and then... Um, so I went to undergrad at Vandy, and then after that, took a little break, and then went to um, a osteopathic school in Nova Southeastern. It's in Florida. I made the mistake of visiting the place when it was snowing here in December, and I went to visit in December. And it's gorgeous. And then you're like, this is where I'm this going. This is exactly where I need to be, yeah. on the beach in South Florida. And I think I counted when I was in South Florida, I was... I, Probably went to the beach about nine times. You thought you were in the south here, and then you go further south. And yes, you're like, oh, and it was wow. and it was gorgeous. Florida yeah. is it will always have a place in my heart. Yeah. You know, my four years there were amazing. Um, and then uh, before I left for school, I met my husband here. Um, in he's Fernando from, or he, he's Arkansas? from Horn Lake. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, he he lives here his whole life, and I met him when I was just kind of coming home visiting, and so. And we did long distance. And so after medical after medical school, I was like, I, I guess I have to go back home, you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I came back and did my residency in Memphis, um, right downtown Memphis, uh, with the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. And after that, I've been practicing emergency medicine and kind of feel like I needed something of my own. So what is, what is practicing emergency medicine? Like so that? I'm an emergency physician. 
So I, if, if you name a hospital in the area, I probably worked in it. <laughs> okay, so you don't work for a specific hospital. It's I don't. So a um, hospital will call you if needed. So I work with a contracting company. So I've worked at um, I've worked at Methodist Hollow Branch. I have worked at uh, St. Francis. I have uh, currently I'm a Baptist DeSoto. So um, so yeah. So, so I've been working at most of the hospitals in the area, and and right now I'm at Baptist DeSoto, which is great because mm -hmm. I live in the community. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that I should serve the people in the community, and there's no better way to do it than to take care of them when they feel like they're the sickest. Yeah. In emergency room. So is it a trauma situation, like that kind of an we emergency? Have, or? We have, yeah, we have those. We have mm -hmm. trauma. We, you know, yeah, your bread and butter, heart attack, things like that. Your and bread and butter? <laughs> 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 so, you know, things like that. So, yeah, we do with traumas and, yeah. you know, whatever that comes our way. So how long have you been doing that? Uh, so I graduated from residency in 2013. So I've been doing it for, this is my ninth year. Oh, so right out of residency. Yeah. So was that your first sort of, what you consider a first full-time job? Yeah, I, uh, I, so I actually did some moonlighting when I was in residency. The third year, our, our, our load, our course load is not as much. Like you only have four core course month that mm -hmm. you have to do just medicine and ICU and things like that. So, um, and if anyone knows me, they would know that I can't be still for too long. So I was like, oh, that's a light year. Let me go pick up a job so I can mm -hmm. make some extra money. Yeah. And so I did. <laughs> so I did some moonlighting. That's how I kind of got, um, develop a relationship with some of the contractors for some of the emergency rooms around here. And then from there, they were like, hey, you were great with us when you were a resident. We have a job for you out of the residency. Why, why don't you come and, mm -hmm. and do this? And so, you know, my plan was to either be a gastroenterologist doctor or uh, or a pulmonary like intensivist a, a lung doctor but I was like okay again I was like I already have a job so why am I trying to run away from a job that's going to pay me now instead of going back to do more training and my husband was ready for me to be done he's like <laughs> you know I've been with you in four year of medical school I've been with you for three year residency like how many how much uh, more school are you going to do have you had any children at this point no I haven't okay. and I was like and, and in a point I mean I always felt like I, I was again I was like man my life is just kind of just going through this where mm. you know outside looking in they're like Oh my God, you've done so much. But for me, I was just like, man, I've just been going to school my whole life. That's all I've done. I really mm. haven't done anything else. And so, and he was right. I mean, he, he's going to see this video and he's going to like, got you on tape that I was right. But, um, <laughs> and he was right. So I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I should just take this job for a few years and like really concentrate on working, paying back my loans and see how it goes. Cause I can, I, I, I truly believe that anyone can always go back to school, right? Mm -hmm. School's always going to be there. So, um, and then now I'm nine years in, you know? And sometime in the interim, I was like, I need to have something that's mine. Right. You know, yes. like I have yeah. to, the autonomy of medicine, right? Uh, if, if you talk to any physicians, I think that that's one of the things that they feel like they're missing is that, man, I can't even chart my own course into how I wanna treat someone or how I want to, you know, proceed with a treatment plan because there's all these restrictions with insurance, you know, Medicare, you know, you know, hospital, the people you work for, all these other things. And so I was like, I need something that's mine. I just didn't know what that was. Mm. Um, I just, having that ownership just brings in a different kind of passion. Oh, yeah, for sure. A different kind of drive. For sure, it's because it's yours. It's and yours. You, and, and you get to decide how you kind of want to build it. Exactly. You like know? how I want it to be, per how, I, how I want to be perceived, uh, the treatments that I want to offer. You know, if I want to say no to someone because it's not the best thing for them, I can. And right. so, you know, the first part of the oath of being a physician is do no harm, right? Mm. And so, but sometimes just because of, pressure, outside pressure, you almost feel like, well, I kind of have to do it, you know, but in a setting that's mine, I can just say, no, it's not yeah. good for you. I don't think that we should do that. So let's talk about Afterglow as yeah. far as how it all started. What, what, when did this journey begin for you? Yeah, so I wanted to do something that was mine. So about three years ago, I was like, what can I do? I thought about opening a medical clinic in town. Um, and then... Um, medical I've always, clinic meaning like a walk-in 
Yeah, like, like a, a walk, like a red med or walk in. You know, again, your primary care, take care of people mm -hmm. with the bread and butter of primary care. You know, diabetes, you know, high blood pressure, things like that. So I thought about doing that, um, but just never really f found a space and 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 just didn't really take off. And then kind of aesthetic was always in the back of my mind because I like to, I mean, who doesn't like to look good? Mm. Who doesn't like to look I mean, good? Clearly. <laughs> I mean, if you look over here, right? I'm looking at Melinda here. Who right? doesn't like to look good? Who doesn't yeah. like to feel good? And to help someone <laughs> achieve that, you know, all of us, I mean, I think, especially women, we kind of have a tendency to kind of pick ourselves apart as we age. Yeah. Like, what if I can help someone get a little bit of that confidence back? You know, um, I always use the example of like a, a someone who is back out on the dating scene now because they go went through a divorce or whatever else. And if I can help them get a little of that confidence back so they can go back out into the dating world, I mean, just that in itself is Bringing gratifying. Bringing happiness to people. Yeah, just that yeah. in itself is gratifying. Yeah. And so... And so I started about three years ago, start looking at courses, start doing online courses, start getting books to really get the, to review all the stuff that I know about the facial anatomy, um, to figure out what the trend was, um, start going to conferences, you know? And at that time it was just personal contribution just to grow mm. and to see if this is something for me. And, and, then, and your husband's probably at this point just he's like here we go something up, else right? yeah he's like here we go something else and then <laughs> and then again I was like okay well yeah this is something you know but you, you know this as a when you start something of your own mm. it's, it's a big fear it's like wow like I'm gonna put all my eggs in this basket and then now I'm signing my husband and my family up for however many years that this is going to take. And not only that, you know, every time that I start, I start something, it always requires more of my time. So yeah. I really had to think about it. So even though I was going to these conferences and it was fun and I knew that it was something that I wanted to do, I wanted to make sure that I was able to go all in because I don't like to just, well, let me dibble and dabble into this and see if it works. Right. So for me, every time I do something, I'm all in. So, well, And you can have the idea, you can mm -hmm. have the, the drive and the knowledge, but owning a business Mm -hmm. There's a whole other ball of wax, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm guessing, I mean, that had to have been totally new for you. Right? Oh, yeah. As far I as mean, how to just get a lease and licensing and, and yes. insurance. And, and and with me, I am. Budget I'm, and just all the business stuff. And side with of me, I'm just so detail oriented just because that's how I've been my whole life. So I want to make sure that I got the right license. I want to make sure that all the elements that I wanted is incorporated, but I want to make sure that I do it the legal way. I don't want to mm, do right, it and exactly. say. Well, let's hope I don't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and yeah, and I've learned the hard way through all that. Like, yes. I took, you know, you got to go A before B before mm -hmm. C, right? Well, there's mm -hmm. times where I've done C and I didn't know A and B needed to be mm -hmm. done. And then like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you, yeah. just, you learn as you go. That was always my frustrating yeah. section of and, that. And Melinda and Sabrina have been with me the whole way. I mean, they will tell you every day is a, for me and for us as a business, every day is a learning process. I mean, we have made mistakes along the way, but we learn from it and we hope we never make it again. Even till this day, we're st still trying to tweak our process and, and well, learning new that stuff. Will never that, you, end. that yeah, will never end. Yeah, I mean, end, we, yeah. there's things that we didn't know. There's things that I didn't know. I didn't know you have to... I don't know, insurance, you know, all the, everything that comes with the building, what I need, what I didn't need. I mean. Personal property tax. Every. Personal property tax in a place of business. Uh, I, I, you don't get me started with that. But. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always joke. It's like you, you, you can deduct all the costs for this mm -hmm. furniture, but then they'll tax you on it. Yeah. Right after. I mean, all <laughs> so those, those are the things I had to learn the hard way All too. those things. Yeah. I mean, I had no idea. <laughs> I, I honestly have no idea, yeah. but but now we do. Hopefully, you know, next year, every year we get better and better. I don't know if we ever. I hope our goal, as I guess, as any business, you want to be on a on a on a, on a level where it just kind of runs itself. I hope yeah. that I hope that we get there one day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my mind, I'm hope we're there in five years. We just finish our first year, so maybe we'll spend this next four years working on to get yeah. to the place where. Man, we just, everything is just in place. So three years, the journey started with, like mm -hmm. you said, the more education and conferences. Mm -hmm. So with this being your first year as a business, mm -hmm. so that was a two-year Oh, yeah, two years just thinking about it. And then I contacted, there's there's plenty of groups out there online. There's a group on uh, Facebook specifically is for 
physicians who were doing other things, but then kind of dabble into aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And so I contacted, that's one thing about me. I'm never afraid to contact anyone, regardless if it's by phone or regardless if it's through the internet. So I contacted a couple of, I kind of reached out to a couple of people in the group and was like, hey, how did you get started? Um, how how do you feel about it? Is it something that I should do? You know, because the original idea for all of this was that I was going to buy a Mercedes Sprinter van <laughs> and I was going to turn the whole inside into like a spa and I was literally going to do Botox on wheels. That was the original yeah. plan. And my husband was like, I've heard of an ice cream truck, but I've never heard of Botox. Would you on have like your own little music that would play? Well, that's what so he asked. He people goes, would hear it. <laughs> oh my like, God, here comes Botox. Instead of mom, I'm getting ice cream. Son, I'll be right back. <laughs> I got to get my Botox. <laughs> Uh, I looked into a van. I looked into like an old school bus. I was like, this is going to work. And my husband's like, this is, I mean, you have a lot of ideas, but this is the craziest ideas you've ever had. Then I mentioned it to a couple of now who are my mentors online. And they're like, that is just crazy. Drive-by inje injections? <laughs> like There are people that do that, though. That just seems like... There so, are people that do that. Just, <laughs> almost seems like it'd be illegal. Right? I know. Like, I know. Like I talked yeah. to, I talked to a physician in in the same group. I talked to a physician in St. Louis, and he is literally on call. You make an appointment with him. Uh, he comes to your house, inject home visits, you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I mean, it could work. And my husband's like, No. So you wanted your version of a food truck, something like that, but but Botox wanted. truck and a filler truck. Yeah. And then finally, one of the mentors that one of the mentors that I met, he goes. You know, Vivian, he's like, taking the first step into starting anything is filled with fear. But he's like, at some point, I always feel like, what is life if I don't, every now and then I'm not mm. getting scared out of my mind and not to take that plunge, you know? And he's like, and if it doesn't work. It's not the end of the world. He's like, you add it? another loan to your list. <laughs> yeah. like, you yeah. had student loans your whole life. And he's like, add another loan to your list and, and say, you know what? I tried it. It didn't work. But at least you can say that you tried it. And imposter syndrome is something I talk about constantly. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned it so many times. Probably in every episode, mm -hmm. I bring that term up. When you're experiencing it and you're experiencing that fear, it's a good thing because it means you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you're, if every day is without fear, then... Some people want that security and they're comfortable mm -hmm. with that. But if you want to grow and you're mm -hmm. not feeling fear, you're not growing. It's just as right. simple as that. You know, so I always try to frame it. If you're feeling imposter syndrome, well, it's actually a positive because you're putting yourself in a new area Yeah. that over time you realize, oh, that's scary now. Mm -hmm. But in six months, I'm going to be laughing about how scared I was. Yeah, this, that's you know? a, actually that's one of the <clears throat> criticism that I always get from people is that they're like, you know, you're always looking at that next thing and you're always, it almost seems like I'm not content with life, right? Yeah. But I just feel like life is too short for me to just be an even kill. You want to smell the roses. Right. Right. And I I, I have to balance this and I have this inner fight myself mm -hmm. uh, because you're always looking three steps ahead. Mm -hmm. But that's how you, that's owning a business style. It's just part of the nature. Well, you know? and for me, I feel like that's kind of how I got to where I was. Yeah. Or where I am now. Well, I you know? mean, how many total years of schooling? So we have four year of college, then we have a uh, four year of medical school, and then I did three years of residency. Yeah, so, so if I was going to be a cardiologist, that would have been another three years. If I wanted to be a GI doctor, that would be another three that's years. That's a career student. So right. that's just, and never mind all the high school. I mean, just yeah. all that schooling just drives you to always have to stay on point and next, next, I, next, I'm next, still next, in school. next. I'm still in school now. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're going for your master's, <laughs> yeah, right? I'm getting my MBA. Yeah, so that's, there you go. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, but I mean, I just cannot, I, I've never been the person that just kind of stayed through life, like, yeah. you know, and as a matter of fact, that was another drive to kind of start this. Not only did I want something of my own, and, um, you know, when I was going to work, it's like, it was just second nature, you know, because you do it all the time. So, I mean, the emergency room, I'm doing these things all the time, and it almost became second nature to me, and there wasn't... Not that I'm always looking for the thrill, but you, you know, you get to, that you little need to be challenged. Yeah, yeah, like that little spark. And mm -hmm. I almost felt like I was losing that little spark. And I love treating people. I love making people feel better. But I was losing that little spark because I was not being challenged. Yeah. You know, so I was like, it's time. And and I was like, okay, let, let me read more. Let me do more. Let me make sure that I stay on top of everything. Even with that, I still feel like that little spark was just kind of like, 
not mm. really was kind of fading away. So I wanted to make sure I, w- I want to see if I could do something else, you know, or you know, start learn something new and and you know start another maybe another chapter in my life that I didn't. Well, starting no. a business will definitely create a big spark, right? <laughs> it have, you know? it have. Uh, I mean, but coming here is a completely different vibe, though. Like, so let's talk about here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, at what point did you start living in Hernando, or do you even live in Hernando? Yeah. So I, so when I came back for residency in twenty, uh, when I came back from residency, got married, twenty ten. We that's when we moved here. Okay. Yeah. So, so we looked everywhere. I was downtown doing residency. We thought about living downtown. Then we thought about living across the bridge in 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 West Memphis or Marion or wherever. And then um, I thought about living in South Haven. And at that time, Hernando. I mean, that's not even that long ago. But at that time, still it was, a lot of change in twelve years. Yeah. Here still, in just kind of you know, like we were just kind of you know, my my husband was like, Hernando is probably where we should be, and the mortgage at that time for the house that we were living in was less than any rent I could find. In, Times have changed. <laughs> right, in Memphis. <laughs> and so I was like, well, if I could own something, you know, why not? And again, at, at that point in my life, like you said, I was a career student. I didn't, I mean, I signed a 30-year mortgage. I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> and so by the time that we sold the house uh, 20, probably two years ago, but two or three years ago, I, I think I still owe like a majority of <laughs> and I had no idea why. Mm. I didn't understand. So that was another thing like in in my mind a lot of people have already gone through, you know, mortgage, loan, life. Well, I've never really experienced you any never of that. never had to have that. No. Reason. I was just getting a loan, living, you know, month yeah. to month, buying books. Money was going. coming to you. Right. Now you got to give it all back. Oh, give right? it all back. Every every last yeah. penny. Every last penny. So when you decide to start this business mm-hmm. was it absolute hernando based for sure yeah. because i mean i think living in hernando i love living in hernando because of the community feel you know i i feel like the community that i live in is what i contribute to it and that's what it's going to give back to me and if i was going to start something that was going to be mine i want to make sure that it was convenient for me and mm-hmm. i want to make sure that it benefits the people that lives around me it's part and, of that passion and heart Right. Too. So I wanted to, yeah. So, I mean, I don't think that I've looked in other places. I mean, I, I might have looked at a couple of spaces in South Haven thinking that that's where I want to be. Mm-hmm. Hey, but for me, I, w- I really haven't I, You looked and, anywhere else. And where we're sitting here, is this the first location? It was not. I actually wanted to be by the square because everybody want, in Hernando want to be by the square, yes, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and so, I, I, I'm blessed. To, you know, uh, not This isn't about me, but I got a little studio office that I'm putting together right mm-hmm. off the square in Caffey. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's the best. I know. I wanted you to pay be, for it, but. Yeah, you know. I wanted to be by the square yeah. um, in the old DeSoto Times building. Mm. And so I wanted to be there, and then I was like, God, I just want to be by the square. And then just as usual, you know, God has his way of presenting himself to me. I was just, I was trying to get the loan for it, and there was just no, there was not enough paperwork, there was this and that. There was all these obstacles to get the loan to build out that space. And finally, the owner of this particular space was like, hey, I have a guy that wants to move out. You want to come by and look at it? And I remember on the phone, I was kind of being like, I don't even know where it is. I don't Off know. Off of Mackinvale. I, that's I like, so so far. So right? far away out of town. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so far. <laughs> and uh and and again, my husband was like, just go look at it. See what it looks like. See Touch it, see it. Yeah. And uh, he go and I go, but I want to be by the square because people walk by it all the time. And he goes, no one's going to walk by the farmer's market on Saturday and go, oh, let me go in there and get some Botox. He said, no one's going to do that. <laughs> he said, people that want that kind of service is going to call and make an appointment. He's like, so you don't really need to be by the square. So anyway, I was like, okay, let me come by and take a look at the space. And and I say God has his way of presenting himself to me is because this was I already decided on the color scheme of Afterglow. And I walked in and this was the color of the wall. That's really like... What do I sign? <laughs> Hand me the lease, please. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay. I was like, this is going to work. And when our the owner of this place is the nicest guy to work with. So cool. anyway, I talked to him and he's like, yeah, he's like, this should work. And he's like, I can give you the space literally in, in, a, in, in a week or two. And so I was like, okay. And I think we had everything 
it's just like everything else in my life. It's like a tornado. In a month, I think we were like, okay, we're ready to go. How much building did you have to do? I did not. Ha- so all these rooms, anyone that walks in, you have a front desk, right? You used to have front a front. Door. You used to have two You'll desks right there. You'll see the wonderful right Melinda. Yeah. And then you take a left and you walk down this hallway and there's just different just rooms, rooms down the hallway. And that was already in place like that. What was here before? It was a real, it was a realtor, realtor company. Yeah. My home go. realty. Okay. Mm, they're upstairs now. Oh, so they just moved mm. different yeah. part. George had everything. Hey, George. George had everything moved out yeah. in, I think, two days, two or three days. Wow. And I came in and like we had to putty some hole in the wall. And then I asked Wynn for some of the more of these paints, just, you know, a couple touch up here and there clean the whole space, order a bunch of, you know, furniture, the chairs, the tables. We went around and shop, you know, for a different, you know, accent. That must have been. And had everything. I mean, I was putting together all these furniture probably in about a, in, in, a, in, a, in a month. I, mean, I have a, I think maybe a 250 square foot space. Mm-hmm. And I had to assemble a desk and a chair and some, a table and a, a storage cabinet. And that was enough to drive me crazy and stress me. I can't imagine furnishing a place like this in a month. Oh, yeah. That must and have supply been. and demand <laughs> issue, too, right? Like, yeah. you order things. You don't know if you're going to get it. Those exam, the exam chairs in there, I mean, it took multiple phone calls. The first shipment never made it. It's still sitting in the warehouse in Memphis somewhere. I thought about driving to get it myself. And then they had to ship us new ones. And then like just trying to find things that are a color, you know, like we have gold accents. So trying to find things that are gold accents. That matches the wall color. Yeah. Purple, purple, turquoise, gold, things like that. Plus the medical equipment. Medical equipment. That must have been a whole journey there. Yes. So medical equipment. The laser I actually had since last March. Like I literally been sitting in my garage since last March of 20, 2021. Just a laser. It, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I, I didn't want to just offer just injectables of Botox and fillers because if someone goes, yeah, I want to get some Botox, but hey, I want to get laser hair removal too. And I refer them to someone else. I might lose that customer forever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if I'm already taking a huge plunge of putting in all this money to start a new place, what? What's another investment into a Mm -hmm. laser that's going to be contributing even to this practice, you know? And it just totally broadens your service offering. Exactly. So, like, we started that, and then we have, and then I was like, okay, we need IV hydration. Everyone keeps asking about IV hydration because everyone goes to Memphis and get their IV hydration. So, I was like, okay, let's add on IV hydration. So, those are the things that we we started with. But, yeah, the laser has been sitting in my my garage. I guess I could have been working on family and friends this whole time, but... (laughs) <laughs> Some people have a tool chest. Other right. people have. I mean, I was going to do Botox on wheels, yeah. but laser hair removal in my garage, you know, was <laughs> kind of fit in with the It might be hard to get that licensing. I don't know. <laughs> in terms of licensing, too, uh, having it on, in a van, I can't imagine what that I, would have been like. I don't like. know what I was thinking. <laughs> but those are some of the ideas that always kind of pops in my mind that, that I, that, you know, thank goodness I have people in my life. Uh, Melinda, Sabrina, my, my husband, my parents, they're like, pump brakes. Like, think about this. To keep you in balance, keep you yes. in check a little bit. Yes. So you sign the lease, 30 days later, you open for business. Open for business. About more, a little bit over 30 days, like a month wow. and a half. Yeah. So when did the doors open officially? Uh, August 19th. Of 2021. 20. Mm-hmm. 2021. Mm-hmm. Well, that's right, because you just had a, a, a birthday party, yeah. Yeah, a celebration mm-hmm. out here. I remember seeing the Sibony yep. in the, the chamber over here. Yeah. That's excellent. So what was the first? like say three months of being open what was that experience like because it's one thing to use your knowledge base to give the Mm -hmm. treatments Mm -hmm. but now you're a business owner surreal you know it's totally different right totally different i mean there's there's still nights where i would wake up and be like okay that was just a dream like i totally do not have my own business I totally don't have all these headaches. <laughs> That's not real. It's yeah. not there. I still have those. Some just nights suppressing. Where, yeah, just Let's, some be, nights. Be where careful. I'm, that stuff's going to come back up. Yeah, right? so some nights I'm like, That's not real. And then every time I walk in here, it's like, Man, I cannot believe that yeah. this is mine. I cannot believe that we're a functioning business for a year. I mean, to me, that is still, you know, the first three months. Just kind of learning the ropes of things, like how how do we bring people in? Social media was actually a big thing I have to learn. You know, yeah. I mean, granted, I go on Facebook and surf and, and Instagram, but making a post, putting music, I had no idea. I'm, I know more 
I mean, whatever I think I know now is probably more, probably nothing compared to a teenager. I always say we can probably hire teenagers to do our social media and we'll probably be better than anything that we probably have ever oh, put out. Oh, trust me. I, I have I have all kinds of goals as far as local hiring. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of high school kids right. as far so, as the social media side of things. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, I have no idea how to make... I didn't even know what a boomerang was. Uh, no clue. I mean, uh, I see people do it all the time, but I'm, I'm like, I'm what still is it? figuring out reels. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, and I had to, I had to go there too. For yeah. my, for now that I'm local, I, but what's great about uh, Hernando is it's definitely connected through social media, especially Facebook. That's what I've for discovered. Sure. Facebook. As I was building the business list for this podcast. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, everyone's on Facebook, and everyone's mm-hmm. doing a really good job on Facebook too. Yeah, and everyone's getting engagement, and, and it was really neat to see, mm-hmm. like, How a community we, connecting yeah. through. Because f- f- even you know, my business has been virtual up until just this year, mm-hmm. uh, and just in general, Facebook or any social media just f- feels like it's so broad. Like you're just mm-hmm. throwing stuff in the dark, and mm-hmm. you're trying to get engagement from anybody. Mm-hmm. But now I get to experience it and see it in a local. Mm-hmm aspect and people helping each other either out and like for example um the uh, episode i did for mississippi eats mm-hmm. M- mississippi eats mm-hmm. or whatever um uh they got 50 shares mm-hmm. on that facebook post 50 oh, wow. shares that's incredible that's it's, it's mm-hmm. that's crazy you know yeah. but that's local people that know mm-hmm. uh them that they wanted to help yeah, you know, so and that's another thing about Hernan- about our community, Hernando, our our community is that word of mouth too. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, yes, social media is big, but really, word of mouth. We get a lot of business on word of mouth. Like, hey, my cousin came here, or like, or with us, our location between you know orthodontist and a, and a pediatric dentist. You know, sometimes they drop their kids off, and they're like, well, what is this? There's that foot traffic you're yeah, looking for. Like, right? so I mean, <laughs> that's what I. Yeah. I mean, everything just kind of falls into place, but yeah. but social media is big. Word of mouth is big around here. We have um, we try to do some uh, print ads, but print ads is kind of fading. It's old school, yeah, fading yeah. itself out. I thought about doing mailers, but you know that for for the cost and what I'm gonna get. We do radio with uh, ninety five three. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what the next thing will be. Advertising but. on a podcast, am I right, yeah. Melinda? <laughs> am I right? <laughs> Yes, uh, yes. And <laughs> we can talk about that too. Yeah. No, but uh no, that's that's so true though. And that's yeah. why I could talk forever about Hernando and why yeah. I'm here. And, it's a great place. Know, I mean my I'm, daughter's a Hernando singer, you know, it's just it's amazing. But yeah, it's a great place. I've, in the very beginning stages that I've experienced here mm-hmm. is now local. Mm-hmm. Still working on that. The hands I'm shaking, the people I'm meeting mm-hmm. already helping, and it's mm-hmm. it's pretty awesome. Yeah. You really can't beat that. A mailer is never going to get you that. I know. And I mean, you know? and also putting a face with the yeah. business. Like, this this right here is great, you mm-hmm. know? Just putting a face with the business, you know? I mean, I, I see some of our customers at Kroger's and stuff, but... But that's another thing, you know. If our if some of our customers, I'm not trying to be rude when when I see them in public and I don't say hi right away because some people don't want to know, don't want anyone to know that they actually came here or that they got stuff done. So if I'm not saying hi, I'm not trying to be rude. Yeah. I just don't know if you want anyone to know that you came here. <laughs> oh, right, they might be hiding. Yeah, they might be hiding, oh, yeah. and we do, we do have a few that are like, okay, my husband doesn't know that I'm here. Got you know, you, yeah. I got my Botox money when I went to get grocery and took out extra cash. No, why, do, why do you think that is? Do you, be, think do you think some people might feel shame? No, or? I think there's just a bad connotation. People don't want to look fake, or people don't want to know that, hey, I got stuff done. But if you ask me, I mean, I, how is how is this any different than getting your hair color? Right. How is this any different than, um, you know, I don't know, getting a pedicure? I mean, this is really no different. There's still a stigma to it. Yeah, there's still a stigma to it. And we live in the South. You know, people do say, oh, my, look at her lips. Or like, yeah. you know, oh, she, yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, come on, we're all going to age. But yeah. I can age gracefully and age a little slower with Botox and fillers. So no shame in it, right? I don't think so. But how, I mean, but, can, how can a woman hide it from her husband when, like— Gradually, is he not supposed to notice? I don't, and that's the like, nice, like all of a sudden change in her skin. I you mean, know, that's like, another thing. They, they, I don't think men are that observant yeah. to know that. Because I mean, I when I first did it, 
I waited for like a month or so. And I'm, and I said to my husband, I was like, you, you didn't even realize I got Botox. And he goes, I, I know you did. And I'm like, well, where did I get it? <laughs> he goes on your ch- cheeks. And that's not where it goes. I mean, I don't think uh, men are that observant, uh, you know, I mean, and, and most of, I mean, most of them, I mean, they love us for us, you know, they don't say they don't, I mean, I I know my husband doesn't pick out each wrinkle that I have. You know, so, yeah, there's yeah. another bad st- a stigma for for men to get it. You know, I mean, I think if we do it, I mean, I would want my husband to. If I'm going to look good, I want my husband to look as good as I do. Yeah, you don't want to. You know, you might, you're going to leave him behind as far <laughs> right. as right. I want him to look. He's going to age out. Yeah, right? I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with a little Botox. I always yeah. said that. You know, Botox. Yeah, like it. There you, know, you go. They, yeah, they do. Can you come offer in. Botox here? We we offer it to whoever. Yeah. You know, I mean, men should look good too. I mean, they they have skin just like we do. Yeah. Why? I'll tell you why what. Not? Market a separate thing called Bro Talks and dedicate one of these rooms to like ESPN. We thought and, about it, you know, and and also we want. I wanted to mention that you have an ABC license. So I you, do. You do champagne and wine, but make that room beer. Yeah, you know, we can do that too. You know, we have Jack and Coke sport, now for yeah, some of our like, mail. Make, it, our make mail. it like a man cave. Yeah, That's and, what, and you know? they can actually get it in our IV hydration room. We have we have a recliner in there. It's a leather recliner. It's heated. It has a massage yeah. thing in it. It has a TV. Every one of our room has Google Music, so you can just walk nice. in and say, "Hey Google, you know, play today's country or whatever." Oh, and that's, then that's pretty cool. So yeah, so every room has that, and sure, we can dedicate one room to just for our male clients. <laughs> well, you said bro talk. They would never, never leave though. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, I'm going to see my doctor, <laughs> and then little did they know they're up here, you know, smoking a cigar and having a Jack and Coke and watching ESPN. And women are very observant, <laughs> yeah. so he's never going to be able to. Why hide do you keep that. going afterglow? <laughs> <laughs> like, what happened to your wrinkles? Right. Are you so, hanging out with Doctor Lowe again? Right. What's going on over there? And they and IV hydration is great for them too. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we we have a lot of service for them too. So let's talk about before we kind of wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Uh, on your on the website and reading your bio, mm-hmm. you definitely have a lot going on that's for community mm-hmm. too. And I'm just going to list off some things that I got off of there, and you can kind okay. of ex, you know extrapolate from there. I got uh, Palmer Home, mm-hmm. Trinity Health, Community Foundation of Northwest Mississippi, mm-hmm. House of Grace. Mm-hmm. I don't know what any of those are. You know, so so, so, so are those very local to here yes the county so, so palmer home they're they're the group that uh throws the uh, mug boat bash every year i've been supporting them ever since even before all of this i think i started supporting them back in 2006 mud bug is they do that in the agri center uh, uh, no nope, they do it right here okay. they do it right here on uh, panola street okay. it's every april okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yep. and then uh and then community foundation is the one that throw on the crystal ball i think i've been with them for about three or I, i've been contributing now for three or four years um, I call it adult prom because we all dress up and we all go to this at this go. community ball. Uh, community ball, and then uh, House of Grace is um, is is the organization around here that helps. Um, I want to say battered women and children, and um, we kind of plugged in with them this year. I've donated clothes and things like that to them before, um, but last year or this year or last year, we actually had one of our every third Thursday we have our Botox and Bubbly event. And uh, we brought them on, and if you made a donation, you get a little discount with us just to kind of help our community. And then Trinity Health is something that I've been involved in since its inception. It's actually a organization that's very much like church health in Memphis. We uh, provide a medical service to uninsured patients in DeSoto County. So the last statistic was that there's 17 to 18,000 uninsured patients in our county. And I mean, again, that comes yeah. back to being a physician, you know, it's, it's getting medical care a undeniable human right. I don't know how to answer that, right? right. But it's I do very tr- convoluted. Yeah, and I mean, I just truly do believe that if someone is sick, you know, I mean, they, they deserve to be cared for too. And this is a, this and is a way for bankrupt. them. not go bankrupt. Yeah, and this is a way for them to, this is yeah. a way for them to um, get the care that they need. So I've been on the board since its inception about two or three years ago. Now I'm actually one of the uh, board director with um, uh, Patrick and Rick. Um, so I'm excited to see where that goes. You know, it continued to get bigger and bigger every month. Um, 
you know, I, I always refer patients there, you know, even from the ER, I'm like, it, you know, they're like, oh, I don't have insurance. You can't give me this. Mm. I'm like, look, go get help at Trinity Health. That's what they are. That's what they're here to do, to serve the member of this community. So, and again, this all ties into the fact that I, I feel like the community gives me what I give in, right? Yes. I have to be able to contribute for it to, if I want anything out of it, I have to be able to contribute. And besides, I want, I want to leave a world better place for my children. Yeah. So. Do you ever sleep? I do. I probably sleep about <laughs> I probably sleep about five or six hours. <laughs> That's not bad, you know. Yeah. So yeah. for me, five or six hours is good. Yeah. Now, every now and then, maybe once every few months, I, I do get into. Um, it just kind of hits me. Yeah. And I'll sleep for twelve or thirteen hours, yeah. but then I feel sick. I feel like I've missed out on life. <laughs> you, yeah. Now you wake up in a mental fog. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god, I slept too long. I have not. I'm I'm behind on this. I'm behind on that. What have I missed? And my husband's like, you you slept twelve hours. It's not like you slept twelve days. Like uh, <laughs> it's, right. just, it's just twelve hours. <laughs> but but I do I do get into those. But but since starting this business, I have to. I kind of still have to have my real. So I work at the ER full time, and then I'm also here full time. So technically now I have like. How can you have two full time? That doesn't make sense. ER job is just, <laughs> ER is shift work, so I do my shifts. Yeah. And then here we have set hours, so I just have to make sure that I have that flexibility. Yeah. But yeah, it's been, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do that for, but but right now is. Well, my next question to wrap things up is mm -hmm. I always ask about 10,000 foot view, mm -hmm. your five-year plan. And earlier you mentioned hopefully things will run itself more in five mm -hmm. years or so. That will help balance your time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you'll end up starting something new anyway. But uh, wh where do you see where do you see Afterglow in the next four years? And and, and when mm -hmm. it turns five years old, mm -hmm. where would you like to? How well, would you like to see this? Would you add another location? Where do you see this? Going? Well, I hope that this is Afterglow is still in the community. Yeah. And then I hope to continue to expand on wellness and um, just anti aging. That's really what I want to focus on. So we're constantly trying to add on new things. Um, I always say that my ultimate goal is to have a building that's kind of have two different sides to it. One of them is beauty, where we do all the aesthetic stuff, where the other side is wellness, where we help someone, you know, build like a almost kind of like a new health plan. Like if someone has high blood pressure, instead of like giving them just a pill, I want to be able to help them with diet modifications, you know, exercise, right. you know, really true anti-aging instead of right now, I feel like in medicine, just because of all the restrictions that we have from outside, from the outside that we're like, oh, if you have this, we'll give you a pill. We'll give you a pill. We'll give oh, you a yeah, pill. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're on 20 pills. Watch the prices, right? Yeah. During the day and every commercial break. Right. You know? And it's about medication. So I really want to help someone like get a better health by or achieve better state of health with more natural things, you know, yeah. changing your diet, really get down to the root of why is it that you have high blood pressure. Gut health. And yeah. All so stuff. I would love to have that building where I where I can do both. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well look, I appreciate so much for you Thank to spend you your so time. Thank you so much. Here. This is so fun. Good. It was fun for me. And like I said, it was the most comfortable yes. for sure. Well, again, thanks for joining me today, Dr. Lowe. It was a pleasure yeah, getting to know you. Yeah, thank you for and, coming. And I hope you're, we can share your story with the community, sure. which is now where we need to challenge the audience. This is where we turn it to the audience because there's no better way to spread this word than to engage with our Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and mm -hmm. share our posts, go to mm -hmm. our website share the episodes and mm -hmm. we earlier in this episode we talked about how social media mm -hmm. is really the thing to do yeah and that's the best way to help dr low and after glow mm -hmm. and which obviously then helps the podcast which helps me mm -hmm. so there's two businesses here that you're going to benefit by just sharing one post if you could so we are on um facebook instagram and uh TikTok. all three are at the real hernando you go to our website, therealhernando.com. You'll find all the links there as well. Uh, you can find Dr. Lowe's episode. If you scroll down the homepage, open that page up. But go ahead and grab that URL and mail it to, email it to a friend. Post it on for your sure. social. It, goes such, it will go such a long way for us. Uh, we're also on YouTube. Again, all these links and all this information you can access at our website, uh, therealhernando.com. Dot com. So thanks again. Dr. Thank you Lowe. so much. This is so fun. Thank you so much. You got it.